Hey, today we're gonna to talk about balancing an equation. And before you do that, just review your notes from 4.4 because remember we talked about coefficients? Well, when you put a, a coefficient in front of some, in front of a compound, it's gonna change the quantity of all the atoms within that compound. It doesn't change the gram formula mass, it's just used to balance the products and the reactants. To review, the left side of the arrow is the reactants, and the right side of the arrow is the products, okay? So the first step we wanna do before we start balancing these equations is we wanna take an inventory of all the quantities of each one of the atoms that are present. So let's start with the first one. It starts easy and it gets a little bit more complicated. This first one, we have, we're gonna find all the hydrogens on the left, all the hydrogens on the right, we have two here, we have two here. They're equal, we can't do anything with that. Let's look at the oxygen. Two oxygens here, because this is assumed to be a one times two. This is a one times a one. Two oxygens, one oxygen. The only way to make that equal is not to change the number and put a, put a subscript, it's to change the coefficient. So we're going to write a two right there. Now we have two oxygens and two oxygens. However, when you place a number in one spot, if you're putting it in front of a compound, you may have messed up the other uh, atoms. So let's check the hydrogens. We have four hydrogens here and only two hydrogens here. We gotta put a two right there. Four hydrogens, four hydrogens, two oxygens, two oxygens. This number is a one. This one is not mandatory. However, for our purposes, it might be a good idea for you to write that one. That way you know that you've checked it, okay? Let's look on to the next one. Some of you, most of you, should remember this from living environment. This is the formula for photosynthesis. Um, the only thing missing is to add energy from the sun right here. Doesn't matter for our purposes. This one's a little bit more complicated. So let's start out and take an inventory. First of all, when you see something like this, you notice how you have an oxygen here, and an oxygen here, and an oxygen here, and an oxygen here? Well, I don't know what I would change first. So oxygen, if you have it in multiple locations, is going to be the last uh, element that we're worrying about. So let's just check and see where we have hydrogens. We have two hydrogens on the left, and we have 12 hydrogens on the right. I can automatically, because there's no other location for hydrogens, I can automatically know that this one, at least initially, needs a six. 12, 12. Now I'm not gonna mess with the oxygens yet. Let's go ahead and check out our carbons. I have one carbon here, and I have six carbons over here. So the number on the left side needs to be changed to a six. Now let's check this out. We gotta look at our oxygens now. I have six oxygens here, and I have 12 oxygens here. That's a total of 18 oxygen. The reason I wrote this down is because it's in two different locations, and it's also in two different locations here. Here I have six oxygens, and this one has two. What do you think we should do? Take a moment. Again, 18 on the left, and we have eight on the right. Let's try to put a number there. So if I had, let's just say, since I already messed with these carbons and I messed with these hydrogens, let's not put a number here. Six plus X equals 18. 6 plus 12 equals 18. So how to get this to equal 12? Put a 6 in front of it. Now we have 12 oxygens here. We have 6 oxygens here for a total of 18 oxygens. Since I didn't mess with anything containing the carbons or the hydrogens, I know that this one's okay. Let's just double check. 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens. 6 plus 12 oxygens. 6 plus 12 oxygens. And finally, 6 carbons, 6 carbons. 
And finally, when we have something containing a polyatomic ion, it might look complicated, but it's actually quite simple. Notice we have SO4 here, and we have SO4 here. So we're not calling it sulfur and oxygen. We're calling it sulfate. Let's start out with sulfate. How many sulfates right here? There's no number in front, so I know that this number of sulfates is actually three because of this three subscript. Since there's no number behind this sulfate, I know that we have one sulfate. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a three in front of this. So now I have three sulfates here and three sulfates here. They equal up. Now let's go ahead and adjust the other ones. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. If you have an element, save them for the end because it's just one number that you got to put in there and you can worry about that after everything else is balanced. So let's go ahead and look. Now we have uh, six lithiums right here. Since this is an element, I can put a six there. Now on this side I had two aluminums, which means over here I also need two aluminums. All right, one more thing that they're going to show you or they're going to ask you on the Regents is um, they're going to ask you to do a form of a ratio. So you're going to get a balanced equation and then it's going to give you some new number. Like for example, if, um, if, I, know, if I have two moles, and by the way, these numbers, in other words, the coefficients, are the number of moles. Uh, when we're looking at a reaction, they ask you if, for example, if I had two molecules, two molecules of hydrogen. See, this is a molecule because uh, it is a covalently bonded substance. Two molecules of hydrogen, I'm gonna produce two molecules of water. If I have two molecules of hydrogen, I need one molecule of oxygen in order to make the water. Now, if it asks you for moles, it's the same thing, just moles. If I have, let's say I had five moles of oxygen, how many moles of water would be produced? Again, if I had five moles of oxygen, how many moles of water would be produced? Here's what we do. We make this into a ratio. In other words, one over five, equals 2 over x. 1 over 5 equals 2 over x. 2 times cross multiply, 2 times 5 divided by 1, x equals 10 moles of water is produced. One more. It's not always going to be perfect like this. Sometimes they might throw you a little curveball in there. So let's say that I started out with five moles of hydrogen. So how many moles of oxygen are needed to completely react with five moles of hydrogen to create water? So I would do the same thing. Two over five equals one over X. Now I'm gonna cross multiply and divide. Five divided by two, X equals 2.5 moles of oxygen. Now here's the thing, you can have a fraction of a mole, you can't have a fraction of a molecule. So I can't have 2.5 oxygen molecules when I'm originally balancing this equation. You always wanna balance this in the smallest whole number coefficients. You don't ever wanna use decimals when you're balancing the original equation. Decimals come for the second half. All right, check this out, good luck.